is this JK200 MPMS going to pass the stress test? That is the question. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Wolfgrid Van Life, and in this episode we are stress testing this 200 amp uh, 4S JK BMS. They have a lot of positive reviews. Uh, we actually receive a lot of suggestions from people that we should be uh, using and selling them instead of DALI. Um, but we've stress tested the DALIs and uh, they've done really, really well. Um, in fact, where they are meant to be 150 amps, we've uh, pushed them to 170 amps and they work just fine. They, they don't have any problems coping with 170 amps. And for the 200 amp ones, they can cope with more than 200 amps before they start giving problems. So we're quite keen to see just how well these 200 amp JK BMSs do. There are some um, reports out there that the MOSFETs uh, blow if you keep them at high temperature for a while. So what we're going to do, we've got this, uh, these old cells, three, 300 amp hour cells. Uh, we've uh, built them into a battery with a JK BMS with a um, three kilowatt inverter, two, 230 volt inverter. And uh, we are going to f at first just connect this little fan heater to it, and then we'll we'll up up the um, the amperage that we draw off here until we are drawing 200 amps. And and the idea is that we'll go over just to, to just over 200 amps just to see how well this all does. Uh, this seems to uh, it's it's got quite open spots. The dally is completely sealed up, and and has some of them have cooling fins that were 150 amp don't. But this is more of a sort of open approach that will allow some airflow. Although if it's enclosed right in the battery, which we'll do in future a test with that, um, it won't be able to uh, cool down with convection um, just because of reduced flow. So let's see how this does and uh, let's get started. So if I get my app out and uh, on the app, <coughs> just check that everything is okay. So on here, I am just connecting to, you can hear it beeping as it's connected. So it's at 14.18 volts at the moment. Uh, a nice low delta of 0 0.006. That's about what we would expect for reasonably good quality cells. And um, currently no amps. So, right, so let's, uh, Check and uh, this on discharge is on, so the inverter should turn on for us. It says 14.3 volts. That's what I would expect to see. We're not drawing anything at the moment. So let's um, get this fan. This is halfway, so we are now drawing only 81 amps, 79, 80 amps. That's cool. Let's go to double. So we're now drawing 157, 158 amps. So we're going to run that for a while and just to see how this actually copes. Um, we've dropped down to 12.55 volts on here. On this it's 12.2, so that's, that's cool. Um, we're losing a little bit down the cables. That's, that's to be expected. That's quite normal and 160 amps at the moment that we are pulling down. So we do want to push this a little bit more than it is already, uh, but we're going to run it like this for a while and just see how well it copes. So probably run it for about uh, 20 minutes or so, then we're going to bring a, a FLIR camera and uh, just to see where various hotspots are. So let's see. Right, so we've been running this for about half an hour at 160 amps. So I'll put the clamp meter so that you can see it. So we're on sort of one, according to this 103 amps, which is not as much as I expected. It's a zero of the sort. And 167, 168 amps, which is what I was expecting. Um, 
places that are getting hot. So this, we didn't tighten this very much. It's actually pretty hot in this join here, this cable here. On each of these, just going by feel, they're all pretty cool. This is actually the hottest point here. These are cool. And uh, these cables are quite hot. So I've got my uh, Fleur camera. I'm just gonna do a screen recording of this. And there we are. So this is the inverter. And you can see this um, pretty hot join there. It doesn't actually show it, but it is actually pretty hot. Um, if you look at the cam, the battery itself, you have positions as well as I can. You can see there are no, the cable is the hottest. So this, this red cable here is the hottest and the black cables are hot. Now if I turn this sideways and look into the BMS you can see it's got pretty hot in some places. By comparison you see the fan, you can see the hot points of the fan of the, of the heater and you can see inside here are some pretty warm components. But <clears throat> we're on 160-ish amps and I'm going to bump this up now. I'm attaching this little heater, which is going to take it beyond its capability. And I'm just wondering if it's going to blow or if it's going to carry on. So turn that on. Go on to 180, it'll creep up a little bit. 190 ish, 200, 204. And I think the Something is beeping at me. Let's see if it's the B BMS. Yeah. It's drawing 220 amps. It's actually the uh, inverter that is complaining, I think. Oh no, it's the, <laughs> I was hearing this beeping sound and it's actually the, the amp meter, the clamp meter. So let's see, let's put it back on. Let's see what it's actually drawing. All right, so the clamp meter is capable of measuring 200 amps. If you see, yeah, we are drawing 218, 219 amps. So that's about 10% more than the BMS uh, should be capable of. So let's switch back to our Fleur camera. Inside, it looks like it's getting pretty hot in places, but if you actually look at what it says, since it's only about 60 degrees. But let's, uh, let's stretch it, let's see what it does over the next 10-15 minutes. I don't expect it to go very long because it's already down to 11.8 volts coming into the inverter uh, running these two heaters. So the inverter just uh, went for a low volt disconnect, so it dropped below 11 volts. Um, Looking at the BMS, it's saying 13.12, so uh, it might be a case of just losing a lot down the cables. And just going by feel, I know there's a more exact science to this, but just going by feel uh, on all of these, this is potentially our hottest point right here. These are slightly cooler, these are hotter. I'm just gonna get a screwdriver and tighten, see if I can tighten these up a little bit over here. And they're pretty tight. They, I know from past I talk at about seven newton meters by hand, six, seven newton meters, and that's so that's pretty tight. Uh, let's turn the inverter back on now. We have turned this one off. Let's turn the inverter back on again.
So the BMS is saying it's 12.6-ish volts, which is fine. And 12.3 over here. So I'll be curious to just really stress this again. So we're back to 160 amps. I'm going to turn this one back on, which is in theory going to drop the voltage down significantly. We've gone to 220 amps again, 11 volts, 11.6 11 volts or so, 11.9 now. Uh, one thing to note is that these cells are not the best quality. They're not our high quality cells that we normally use. Uh, these are some that we tested out. Uh, they've bloated a lot. They did some of the met capacity, but they were all bloated quite badly. So let's see what happens. 2.3-ish kilowatts, 11.9 volts. <clears throat> and if we come and look here, I mean, it's, this is the hottest just by touch, by fingers, and I can't get into here, I don't want to for now. This is fine, this is quite hot. I, my fingers have very high heat tolerance, so for me to be able to, or well, not to be able to keep my fingers in here means this is pretty hot. Everything else is fine. But the BMS so far is coping at a um, amperage of 216. So, so far I'm impressed. Um, others have reported that the MOSFET fails, but in our case it's working quite well. The only thing that I really don't like, as I said, is that this connection point gets very hot and I can't really tighten this much more. I will try and see. No, that's about as tight as we can get it. It's sitting at 11.9 volts, happy with that. So I'm not sure if the BMS cut it off, that's why there was a, a low voltage disconnect, I'm not sure what happened. So the, uh, I was watching more closely now, and the BMS has uh, gone into an over, uh, over amperage or over current uh, protect mode. So it has cut its discharge and, um, which has meant that obviously the inverter got no more power to drive everything and everything switched off. Uh, the, the BMS has now counted down, it counts down a certain number of seconds, I think about 30 seconds or so. It's counted down and has uh, reinstated the discharge so we could run this again. We should be able to turn this back on again. Yeah, it turns back on. And you'll notice the fan will come on. And I'm just going to turn it off so I can speak more clearly. So <clears throat> in summary, the JK BMS, uh, we have uh, pushed it pretty hard. We've, we went for about at least half an hour at 160 amps continuous and then we moved it up to 220. So we deliberately went over its capacity by 10%. What, from what I can see, um, as long as you are less than 10% over, as in your 2.219-ish uh, amps, it's fine. It carries on coping, albeit uh, with quite a lot of heat buildup, especially on these points here, and I've tightened them as much as I can by hand. Um, as I said, past experience says that when I tighten really tight with a big screwdriver, I'm tightening it's somewhere around seven, maybe up to eight newton meters um, by hand. So they are pretty tight. They're not loose by any stretch of imagination, but there's quite a lot of heat buildup here.
There's also a bit of heat build up here, not as much. And then according to the Fleur camera, this little camera that we attach to the phone, uh, there's quite a lot of heat build up inside there. And I can see where the MOSFETs are is probably where the most heat is. Um, so the BMS does cope uh, when it's within its capacity rating, it copes absolutely fine. And, and I would say that if you were going to draw less than 200 amps on this 200 amp BMS, you would be absolutely fine. Uh, if you were to draw <clears throat> more than the 200 amps that they state, I think that you, if, if this is all enclosed, you might find that the heat buildup poses a little bit of a problem. But the nice thing about the JK is that you have two temperature probes, get them out, um, and the one is actually uh, under the cells as we speak, so we probably crunched it. Um, it has two temperature probes and you could put the one against the BMS, so you know possibly sort of tape it there or so, and the other one you put onto your cells so that it, using the one temperature probe you're not charging when you're less than say five degrees centigrade and using the other one, you're cutting off the BMS when it reaches a certain temperature. It's probably how we would do it to protect itself. But um, so far, well pleased. We, we're going to do more tests and uh, just to see if we, you know, repeatedly charge the starch and, and um, see if eventually these MOSFETs blow as some people have reported that they do. But so far, well pleased with the JK. So thanks for watching folks and uh, We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.